What did your parents think oh, about this whole oh, thing? No, oh, you had to go there. Oh, oh you knew subject. I would. <laughs> were they were they supportive at first, or were they like, I'm not sure what these kids are up to here? Uh, well, which ones? Well. So 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 my parents um, were they they thought it was amazing. They were so excited, and they they always thought that you know uh, they loved our relationship, and they thought we were destined to do some great things. I think Melissa's parents were a little. Um, they were worried Petrified. for us, you know, because in their lives they had always had solid careers. They took the chance and you could say it more than worked out. To date they've sold billions of dollars in toys and are considered the number one seller of educational toys on the planet. But the early years were tough. So we started in my parents' garage and we used their station wagon. Our meals were always, you know, a little uh, boiled water and ramen noodles. Their first product was a sing-along video, which they sold store to store from the station wagon. Then they went to the famous New York Toy Fair. We had one product in our back pocket, and we sat there and we basically begged people to look at our product. And, and we'll never forget, at the end of it, we were, you know, we were bent down below. We were just talking a bit and sitting down on the ground before we left. And the people exhibiting next to us said, those poor losers, they'll never be back here again. And we heard that and we said, okay. I started crying. We said, that's it. He, we need he, to step up our more. game. I started crying, he was like. <laughs> I'm like, that's all I needed. We'll be back. They were determined. After the video, which did well with some stores and not so well in others, they turned their attention to toys. This fuzzy puzzle was their first. How do you come up with the ideas? You. They're all Melissa's. <laughs> I mean, they're all, um, Every idea has a story, and they're all basically need-based. They're things that were sort of lacking in products that already existed, because unlike other companies, we're not looking forward, we're not looking at like hot trends or the next new license or what's fashionable. We're looking backward at um, play patterns from the past and things that kids love, but we're trying to improve upon those. A perfect example, their coloring pad, one of the top sellers at the company. Melissa saw an opportunity to improve on the coloring books that were everywhere. So this is sort of the story behind every product we create. So we created a coloring pad, not a book, but it's a pad. And it's um, a little bit larger and horizontal so that more surface area is in front of the kid and it's a full 11 by 14, and it's printed on this beautiful white bond paper. And it's a hit, not that there aren't misses. They will visit stores to listen to what folks say about their products. So I'm always yeah. going in the store yeah, and I'm he, like walking he think, around like this. I think he this. always wanted to be like a sleuth, like yeah. a private eye or something, and he thinks that if you <laughs> That's not noticeable at all. Yeah, no, just right. be standing there. I'd always say to Melissa, like do, are, they, are they looking at me? Some of their best critiques come from kids, including their own. They have six. Literally every single night I'm bringing home at least one item and in fact, so this morning I just we just nicked something because I brought it home last night. One of the, our kids? No. Oh, no. one of the products. One of the products. <laughs> brought it home in one of the final reviews and it was terrible. It just didn't function properly. It didn't look like the value it should be. And the minute the kids just said, we don't like this, I said, you know what, this product isn't good. Funny enough, the couple's children have received Melissa and Doug toys as gifts from friends who just didn't make the connection. Last okay. year, my yeah. daughter yeah. got one of our um, one of our pads, and it was the she took it the first of all the toys. She got you know 25 toys, and she actually opened the pad and started playing with it, and I had to laugh. Melissa and Doug toys are mostly marketed for the little ones. Our sweet spot is zero to five, with the goal of each toy being low skill, high impact low skill, high impact, that they can easily do it, and when they do it, they're like almost astounded by their own result. And two, is they're wanting to come back to it. So tell us about mm. your line of toys. Mm. Wow, well we, at this point, we're proud to say we could stock an entire toy store. So we make everything from baby, to classic wood, to a full line of puzzles, to role play, to arts and crafts, to plush. The plush is so real that one of their tigers was mistaken for a living animal after someone left it in a meadow in England. They, they shut, shut down, down the a whole cricket area. Match. Yeah, they a closed cricket match. the highway yeah. and they literally had... And um, they tranquilized, they shot it with a tranquilizer from, from a helicopter and it was only <laughs> after they got down there and they saw the Melissa and Doug tag on it. <laughs> so then of course after that everyone said this is one of the greatest 
PR stunts ever, which we had nothing to do with. But once we heard it was a good, then we said, oh, maybe we'll take credit. Melissa and Doug's partnership started 25 years ago, and you can tell all these years later, it's still a good one. Melissa's a creative genius. And Doug is like the most hardest working, <laughs> passionate, honest, positive person in the world. Melissa is clearly the brains, <laughs> and always the brains need, you know, their decorative eye candy to come with them now. So, um. He is the eye candy. <laughs> For Better Connecticut, I'm Denise DeCenzo.